Let's get ready for another workout. Yesterday I was journaling and I realized that I was in grief. Before I get into that, today we're going to be tackling triceps and back. Both of them, whenever I look in the mirror, I can tell that they're much larger than some of the other muscles in my body. And so it's not like super hard day. I think I actually really enjoy doing triceps and I enjoy doing back. But I would say back is a very large muscle and can be kind of difficult. Anyways, going back to the grief thing. So I was journaling and I was just thinking about some relationships in my life that never fully flourished. And I don't know if anybody else relates to me on this, but sometimes I get really sad just thinking about what could have been. And it hurts to think about friendships or ministry opportunities. More specifically for me, I've had a lot of people come in and out of my life and sometimes I look back at those relationships and I forget that maybe I haven't grieved them properly. And I was kind of searching up before starting this video, the topic, how to deal with things that could have been. Because I realized that as I was journaling yesterday, I was really sad over some friendships in my life that never fully became what I expected them to be. And I realized that that's actually connected to grief or I should say grieving. So of course, like anything in life, I was asking God, like, how do I deal or how do I let go of contemplating, thinking about getting sad over these relationships that never fully got to where I wanted them to be? And the first thing that kind of was brought to my mind was the idea of Sodom and Gomorrah, which is usually not the first thing I would think of when someone is grieving or thinking about things in the past. But then I realized, wait a second, no, that's, that's kind of what happened. So you guys are not familiar with the story. Lot is called out of Sodom and Gomorrah by his cousin or uncle, can't remember, Abraham. And his wife, I guess, had a hard time leaving behind the, the life that they had built in the city that they had built. Even though it was a really sinful city, I'm sure that they had expectations and friendships and relationships there. And... God had warned them, you know, don't look back at the city because if you look back at the city, you'll turn into a pillar of salt. I've, I've sort of understood that story in like a superficial kind of way. I think it has a great lesson to offer us, which is, I, I'm actually just running out of this. I'm going to transfer the contents of this jar into this jar because I'm almost out. But I think that story has a great lesson and what happens when we look back on our past without the Holy Spirit or without God. I think it's okay to look back on your past and, and appreciate things that you've been through or things that you're going through. But if you start to idolize what could have been in situations that God had taken you out of, then it, it can become very similar to what we saw in the story with Lot and his wife. We can become pillars of salt and it can honestly take our eyes and attention off of, of God and what he's trying to currently do in our present. So does it hurt when you had a friend who you thought was going to be an incredible friend in your life or you had an opportunity present itself and then it didn't go the way that you imagined it? Yes. Can you journal about that? Reflect on that? Yes. But when it starts to consume your daily thinking, it becomes an idol to what you wanted instead of what God actually allowed over your life. Can I say that I'm sad that some of my friendships didn't work out? Absolutely. But I'm also extremely grateful for what has happened in my life. Because a lot of times, whenever God removed someone from my life or removed an opportunity from my life, it was because I needed to grow and I needed to learn from that particular situation. There was a lesson to be learned in there. And if I would have stayed in that, then I probably would not have had the life that God envisioned for me. And ultimately, it goes down to trusting in God. When I look back at my past and I say to God, I'm upset that this relationship didn't work or I was so excited about that new job. I'm basically telling him, I don't trust that what you have for me in the future is good enough or I'm too consumed with what I want to really appreciate what's happening in the now. So I guess it's an opportunity for repentance and to be honest in your feelings to the Lord about how you may have some sort of idolatry when it comes to you wanting to take control in certain situations. But you can just be honest with God and tell him, I'm not happy over what happened. Help me to understand 
why it did happen so that I can be able to properly grieve it, accept it, understand it, and flip it for better purposes in my mind. A lot of times when we're going through the grieving process or the how can I deal with what could have been process, we have to make sure that we're looking back at that situation and attaching a new meaning to it. One that helps it to flip over to a positive meaning. I don't want to live in the past because it distracts from the now. I think that's a quote from The Incredibles. And if you find yourself in a position where you're really struggling to move past what could have been, start to be thankful to God for all that you have right now and what is he currently doing in your life. Because if you can't stop thinking about what could have been in the past, then you're not really trusting God for your well-being in the future, right? Those were just my thoughts for today and how the Lord has been speaking to me on how I can deal with my what could have been and just realizing that God is doing extraordinary things right now in my life. And if I continue to look back in the past, I'm going to miss the incredible things that he has set up for me in the future. And it just goes right back to trust, trusting that he does love me, he does care for me, and he is looking out for me. All right, let's get the workout started. I was here stretching, just thinking about how there are so many people out there today talking about Jesus and attaching their own characteristics or their own mindsets to the character of Jesus. And they go through the Bible and they start reading passages or explaining things that Jesus did and then attaching their experiences and things that they're thinking into the thought process and the experiences of Jesus when they have no idea who Jesus is at all. They don't have any type of running relationship to him. They don't have any devotion to him. They don't spend any time with him at all. And I just thought to myself, how many people are there out there today talking about Jesus and teaching others about who Jesus is when they have no relationship with him whatsoever? That's like if I started teaching someone about an individual in my life who I called a friend, but I didn't know anything about them. You know, that's like if I start telling someone about Kim Kardashian and being like, this is what Kim Kardashian meant by this, or, you know, the Queen of England or someone. If I don't have any type of relationship with that individual, it's like a game of telephone at that point. It's me just attaching my own experiences, my own opinions on the Queen of England or Kim Kardashian. And that's what people do with Jesus. It's like, there's so many people out there especially on social media, talking about Jesus and his characteristics that they have little to no knowledge of because they're just not in his presence and they don't actually know him. Like they are not a friend of the bridegroom. They're not friends with Jesus. So we just got to be really careful who we listen to online, what we're taking in when we're watching social media. We have to have extreme discernment when it comes to these things of just who are we listening to? and discern whether or not they actually know the man who died for humanity, who gave up his life and who was willing to sacrifice everything. And does that person's character align with the character of Jesus? Because that's how you're really going to know whether they know him or not. How do we know whether pastors or teachers actually are preaching the true word of God? Whether they act like him. That's what Jesus said. They, you will know them by their fruits, not by how much they seem to know because anyone can know, even the Pharisees knew. They knew a ton of stuff, but they were wrong about the character of God. So as you can see, I'm at the gym now. I'm gonna start my workout with some cardio. I'm gonna do about 30 minutes of cardio after my stretching. And then we're gonna hit back and triceps. All right, so I just had a nosebleed that lasted 15 minutes. So I was in the bathroom taking care of that. Sometimes I just get random nosebleeds, especially if it's like hot outside or if it gets too cold outside. There's just like a dislodged vein in my nose. And so it needs to be casterized. Is that what it's called? It's like when they burn it, it just keeps bleeding randomly. Sometimes it'll happen to me when I sleep. It's very, very, very annoying. But anyways, besides that, I can finally start my workout. I'm going to be doing a lat pull down with uh, little stick metal things. <laughs> so let's get started. Let's go ahead and let's do... We're gonna start at 143 pounds here. And you wanna bring this all the way down, try to touch your chest, and adjust your seat if you need to, so that you're not tiptoeing like I am at the moment. 10, 11, and 12. I hate nosebleeds, I really do. On the last set here, I brought the weight up to 165 pounds. 
I don't know if I'll be able to finish it, but I'm going to certainly try to push myself through it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm trying to breathe. Nine, 10, 11. One more. Oh, I'm trying to bring it all the way down. It's not as easy as it looks. Now we are moving on to back rows, cable back rows, back rows. But I'm gonna do 121 to start as a sort of warm up. So the, the key to this one is you wanna make sure that you are squeezing your shoulder blades together in the back and you're extending all the way forward. That's four, 11. 12. I used to be able to do a lot of weight on this machine, but then I had a kind of a strange back injury for a while. And I was hitting like 160 pounds on this. And then I had to lower it. I had to lower it for a while, like around 80 pounds or so and build my way back up to 160. So now I can finally hit 160 pounds on here. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit 160 pounds. I had to eat some of my, um, I don't know what this is, like a beef jerky or maybe turkey jerky. Got it from Whole Foods, but feeling very low energy because of the nosebleed that I had earlier. I think I lost a lot of blood. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do 143 pounds instead of 165. Make sure I don't pass out here. That'd be funny though. If I just pass out while recording, that'd be a viral moment. All right, so 143 to end this out. <sighs> 10, 11. 12. Try not to use the momentum. It's hard when I'm weak. You know? All right, so here we are again with my favorite, the head crushers. I'm gonna be doing 30 pounds. I think that's what I did last time. It was either 30 or 32 pounds. I should really start to keep track, but if this seems light, then I'll go a little bit harder. One, two, 10, 11, 12. I think I'm also going to eat a banana because I am feeling low energy for sure. Anybody else have the problem where they buy, what is it, not a stack of bananas, but like a... A bunch of bananas and they just go bad like so quickly. Like, look at this. Look at this. It's like already black and I just bought this like four days ago. It's the organic ones. The whole food ones. They don't put the preservatives and the chemicals, you know? That's what makes it last longer and makes it taste healthier. <laughs> People are watching me eat this banana like, what is he doing? Why is he filming this? Reminds me of that scene from She's a Man. Where the lady's like, eat like you have a secret. And she's like. <laughs> so you guys already know what's happening here. I'm going to do some drop sets. Explained to you guys last time. I explained to you guys last time how drop sets work. I'm on 49 right now. So I'm going to do 12, then 10, then 8. 9. I think that was 9. <laughs> 9, 12. Let's do 13. 13. Just in case I missed one. Right into 55. One, two, nine, and 10. Ooh, man. These always kill me. And now I'm gonna do eight. So, so far we've done two back exercises. I think uh, one triceps. So this is gonna be the second tricep exercise. And then we'll do another back and another triceps. And then I think we'll be done. One, two, three, seven and eight also with the tricep head smashers or head crushers i ended up going all the way to 37 so i did my last set with 37 pounds 37.5 so i don't know which one's more effective going up in weight with the drop set or going down in weight because i just did down in weight so 66 or 60 all the way down to 49 that was significantly easier so i'm going to do it that way again so from 60 down to 49, 8, 8, 10, 12. 
three, four, eight. All right, now we're doing 55. I think it's just because, you know, you get the hard weight out of the weight first. Well, you, you get the hard weight out of the way first. One, two, nine, and 10. Ooh, you guys can see me struggling there. You know it's hard when my face starts to scrunch up. And now we've got 12, 12 reps on 49. I'm not ready. Oh, one, two, nine, 10. I can't do it. Hold on. Two more, two more. 11 and 12. All right, so I need to head home. I've been here for way too long, like most days. And I'm gonna do some dips here. It's already seven o'clock and I need to get my, my lunch in. You're like, Samuel, lunch? What about dinner? Well, I woke up really late because I was tossing and turning all last night. I think I am coming down with like a cold or something, but I rebuked that in Jesus' name. Um, and so I can't wait to get, get home and actually take some vitamin C and alka -Setzer. So hopefully I don't get sick because that's the last thing I need as I started a gym vlog is to get sick and not be able to go to the gym. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's do some, some dips. I'm not gonna use the assist. I have never used this machine before, so I didn't even know how to undo the, the assist. These are great for triceps. You guys are wondering, three, four, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Could probably do even more than that. And I'm gonna mix these with some pull-ups. They're very difficult, in my opinion. I really struggle to do pull-ups. I mean, it's like 173 pounds, so it's a lot. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, and that's all I can do. <laughs> it's harder than it looks, guys. All right, so this has been a successful workout. I could continue. I always feel like I want to continue. I didn't even get a chance to do abs, but it is way too late. It's almost 7 p.m. and I gotta go eat something. I would rate this workout a seven out of 10. I really need a 10-10 one day. Show you guys what a 10-10 looks like, but this is my fault because I overslept today. It just sucks when you don't get good sleep because you come in and you're exhausted and you're tired. And I just been tossing and turning all night and then I wake up with like a, almost like a sore throat. So pray for me guys, pray that I don't get sick and I'll catch you guys on the next vlog tomorrow. Let me know in the comments what you wanna hear more about, see more about. I wanna make sure that I'm improving every single vlog. And if you have a chance, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and go to my website, SamuelAbrahamPerez.com where you can support my journey financially <laughs> if you want to. If not, videos on YouTube are free. All right, peace out guys, God bless you.